Hey, Kali here. I'm someone who's in their mid-twenties, perpetually undateable, might have anxiety issues surrounding friendships, and whose career in art is dying a slow, painful death. Naturally, that led me to watching Frances Ha, Greta Gerwig, and Noam Baumbach's 2012 coming-of-age dramedy about this weird stage of adulthood where everything is suddenly shifting, whether we're ready for it or not. And I didn't just watch it once, I re-watched it like three or four more times, much to mine and my friend's chagrin. She's just like me for real. The film follows the titular character Frances as she stumbles through this transitional phase in her life. Her relationships, her dreams, and even her priorities are shifting in ways she's not ready to confront. The people she loves are outgrowing her, and instead of adapting, Frances clings tightly to the person she thought she was supposed to be. But this isn't an underdog, she fights despite it all story. Her arc is messy as she regresses and gives in to the urges to remain in her idyllic way of living. Everything seemingly unravels all at once. There aren't a lot of cultural touch points to deal, talk about it. I mean, there aren't songs about a friend growing faster than you <laughs> or movies about it or poems about it. It's just this kind of ache that has no outlet. And I think that's something that um, we didn't set out to write a movie about um, a friendship evolving, but that just seemed to be the story that was underneath the characters. The catalyst of all this is a breakup with her boyfriend over plans of moving in together. Now, while this breakup might have been coming regardless, as the dialogue suggests this isn't the first time they've talked about it, this is our first glimpse at Frances' inabilities to commit to a future she's unsure of. From there, her best friend Sophie moves out of their shared apartment and she moves ahead in life in both career and blossoming relationship with her boyfriend Patch. After that, she rejects a practical day job offer at the dance academy she frequents because she's not ready to admit being a professional dancer is not panning out like she'd hoped. Even the director of the dance academy gives Frances advice to just take the job no matter how shitty it can be, because it'll give her something stable while she figures it out. However, because she rejects the offer and lies that she's found something better, Frances is forced to take odd jobs, and later on in the film, she regresses even further to being back at her old college. While not a student, she works as an RA and a server for an alumni event. These moments pile on top of each other, making Frances feel hopeless about her situation. However, she isn't self-destructive. She's not trying to ruin her life further. She's just desperately clinging to a version of herself that no longer fits, and watching it all fall apart in slow motion is heartbreaking. But, like one of our generation's great philosophers says, I'm going to let go of things that don't serve me. And letting go of some of that stuff, I'm going to leave claw marks on it because I love some of that stuff and I love some of those people. But those people and those things are not good for me. And that's okay. And in that time, you can be sad, but you can also think to the future, and who am I going to be in six months after I've let this thing go? And that's so exciting. And it's so beautiful. This is the core of Frances's struggle. She's not ready to let go. She wants her life to continue like the montage towards the beginning of the film. She wants to keep the feeling of being a young woman ready to take the world on alive. She doesn't want the story of us, us being her and Sophie, to end. The black and white cinematography and multiple references to films from the French New Wave, a movement also steeped in romance for cinema and life, further emphasizes the picturesque version of life we build in our heads. At one point, Frances tries to mimic those around her by taking a spontaneous trip to Paris, something she definitely can't afford. This ends up blowing up in her face. She thinks she'll find the answer there, just like she thought she'd find the answer while visiting her parents in Sacramento earlier in the film. But ultimately, she is still left with herself. But after an unexpected reunion and deep conversation with Sophie, something in Frances' mind clicks. Everything she wanted was right in front of her the entire time. By the end of the film, Frances doesn't necessarily have everything in her life together, but she is getting there. She might not be living with Sophie, but she does have a place she can call hers. She might not be a full-time dancer, but she is choreographing shows all her loved ones go to see. She built a life that, while not the one she had in mind, is truly her own. And maybe that's the point of growing up, making compromises and shifting our hopes and dreams in a way to enrich our lives instead of destroying it. It's going to be messy along the way, but as long as we have that special someone or special group of people we can catch each other's eyes with, and be in our own little world, 
then everything will be okay. Thank you for watching.